guys, this is Nancy and welcome to Designer Savvy. Today's video is how to accessorize any room. Throughout the video, I will show you some examples of what I mean and how you accessorize. It's as easy as making your bed or getting dressed because we do it in layers. If this sounds interesting, then stay tuned. We're going to break this down into four easy layers and I'm going to show you some still photos to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So layer number one starts with the ceiling. All you have to do is pick out a light fixture that you like. You can Google it. You can go to your nearest lighting store. Look at all the lights to your heart's content. Before long, you'll know what you like and what you don't like. Choose one, add it to Pinterest, and you're good to go. So layer number two is the walls. We're assuming you've already picked a color and you already know what your style is for the room. So you know which direction to head with your decorative accessory. So layer number two is the walls and that includes curtains and that includes wall decor. Now some of you may be saying, well, I don't really like curtains. I don't want curtains. I just like to see nature. That's perfectly all right. So we can move right on to the wall decor. Wall decor is anything decorative that you choose to hang on your wall, such as shelves, art, a photograph, metal wall decor, a quilt, or some other kind of wall hanging. Layer number three is the floors. That's going to be your rugs. Now you might choose just to have one rug, no rugs, or you might want to double up and put a smaller rug on top of a larger rug, put it on an angle for visual effect. Layer number four, probably the most challenging, and that is flat surfaces. That includes anything you put on a tabletop, anything you put on a sofa, a chair, an ottoman, a bookcase, shelving. This is where we place throws, pillows, baskets, candles, books, lighting, and any kind of tchotchkes. Yeah, I said tchotchkes, you know, knickknacks. Another thing to keep in mind is, like I said in the last video, Remember to appeal to the five senses as much as you can when you're decorating your rooms. For comfort and softness, you're going to be adding your throws and your pillows here. And remember, use texture. It's okay to have some smooth throws and pillows, but it's also okay to add a little bit of textured textile. For fragrance, you'll want to use candles, essential oils, diffusers, reeds, for a touch of the outdoors, bring in those florals and plants and trees. You might want faux ones or you might want the live kind. So one thing to keep in mind, if you have little ones in the house or pets, be sure and choose plant varieties that are non-toxic to them. Another good, healthy, interesting fact is that a lot of plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen purifying our homes. If you have an intercom system in your home, you may want to pipe in some music. The right music can be very soothing and can actually lower your blood pressure. You may want to add a dish of your favorite candies or in the corner of your family room, you might want to have a refreshment and beverage station. Now let's break it down just a little bit further for some rolls of thumb and some more tips. You've probably heard before to use odd numbers when decorating. And the reason why is, well, because it's more visually appealing. Sometimes less is more is a good thing. When accessorizing, never cover more than one third to two thirds of the surface area. When creating your vignette on your flat surfaces, remember to adjust the height of your decor. It's visually more appealing and it gives your eyes a resting point. You can elevate your items with a dish, 
a covered box, or books. Use texture in every room that you decorate. When you think of texture, think of smooth versus rough. So smooth, for example, would be a soft, silky pillow or throw, smooth glass. And rough would be, for example, um, a knobby pillow cover or the rough texture on a terracotta pot or the rough texture of a wicker or rattan basket. I'm talking about visual texture, which would be the difference in a smoothly painted wall and an embossed wallpaper as well as texture that you can touch and feel with your hands, such as with throws, pillows, a bowl of orbs, or flowers. Incorporate a combination of different finishes in your room, such as woods, metals, glass, or acrylic. Use your more expensive items with your lesser expensive items in your same grouping no one but you will know the difference. Restyle old outdated pieces that are the wrong color and it will give that item a fresh new look. One of the most fun things that I love to do is shop my own home. Borrow items from another room. It'll seem like it's brand new. If you are a collector and you have those items in every room of your home scattered everywhere and it, it might kind of look like a flea market exploded? Consider downsizing. Maybe there's somebody you know that collects the same items and you could gift some of your items to that person who also loves to collect. Designate a special place and location in your home for your collectibles, such as a curio cabinet, a bookcase, and display those items intentionally so that it looks like a gorgeous grouping and not a shrine. Part four of this four part series will be how to choose furniture for your room. And I am gonna give you my favorite insider tips and secrets on my favorite places to shop and where to go and when to get the best deals. You won't wanna miss it. I hope you enjoyed this video today and that you got some awesome tips that you can use in decorating your next room. So what was your favorite tip today? I would love to hear it. Please leave it in the comments below and share it with everybody. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. If you want to ring the bell, I'll let you know when I post new videos each week. They come out on Wednesdays and would love to have you as a subscriber to join me on this YouTube journey. Thanks so much for watching today and have a great day and happy decorating.